My name is John Stewart. Man, do we have a good show for you tonight. The chairman, not the uh, alderman, not the assistant uh, secretary, the chairman of the Wisconsin Democratic Party. <laughs> Only at The Daily Show does that get a big round of applause, really. <laughs> Wisconsin Democratic Party. Ben Wickler is going to be joining us to discuss the future of the National Democratic Party. Specifically, uh, is there going to be one? <laughs> I don't know. But first, ladies and gentlemen, we can often get cynical about the state of things in the world. Fall in a, a cycle of despair, as though the horrors and deprivations of our modern world can never be overturned or undone. But then at our lowest, we get images like these from this weekend. A moment in time of pure, unalloyed joy. The delirious, almost uncomprehending excitement for a people celebrating a suddenly bright and hopeful new future. Yes, even the people of Syria are celebrating the New York Mets signing Juan Soto. You heard them. You heard them in the streets chanting, I can only assume we're going to the series. <laughs> I, I, I kid, of course. Those images were jubilant Syrians celebrating the end of the 50-year rule of the murderous, despotic Assad family, a result that would have seemed incomprehensible even two weeks ago. And you know what's the real deal? because they sealed it with the universal symbol of fallen dictatorships, the traditional toppling of the statues. <laughs> they pulled them down with rope. They toppled the horse one. They knocked over the one where Assad signaled field goal. They even paraded Assad's head through the streets like a decapitated Charlie Brown in the Macy's Day Parade. <laughs> And if I may, a quick word to the many remaining despots in the Middle East. It is my deepest hope that when you see this footage, you realize once and for all that you are really skimping on statue structural integrity. <laughs> because when you are overthrown, and you will be, they're just going through these statues like it's tissue paper. I mean, this one here, look at this one here. Guy just pushes it over with one hand. It's all that, just, boom, it's just one guy. This statue is a symbol of my eternal power and iron fist that, oh no, don't touch it. It's just clay and pressed wood shavings. Father always told me if it's worth putting up a symbol of autocracy, it's worth doing it right. And while the dictators could have made it fun for people by filling the statues with candy or something. <laughs> Assad's former subjects are still finding a way to have fun with the toppled totems. It's like their new public transport system. <laughs> some, kind of, some kind of Syrian version of a Club Med banana boat. <laughs> by the way, I, I don't speak Arabic, but I'm Pretty sure that what they were chanting there is, uh, mustache rides five cents. <laughs> mm. Oh, I know that fella there is feeling the sweet taint of freedom. <laughs> but while Statue Assad is being teabagged in the streets, <laughs> actual Assad has left the building. Assad fleeing with his family to Russia, where he had been granted asylum on humanitarian grounds. Oh, they nice they hug. Oh, that's so sweet. Yes, Putin has given Assad humanitarian asylum and then immediately sent him to go fight in Ukraine. They're very... <laughs> they're very shorthanded. But uh, obviously, it's a great decision uh, by Assad. I think no leader can go wrong in their exile choice by posing one simple question to themselves. What would Steven Seagal do? <laughs> but if Assad is in Russia, you know what that means. 
Nobody's home at the palace. It's open house, people! The estate sale begins! Crowds are pillaging the palace. They are sitting in his chairs. They are taking pictures in his chair. They are, they are stealing more chairs. They, was there some kind of terrible seating problem in this country? The people are rushing the palace, and they're just taking the chairs. People are coming out like, don't bother going in, the good chairs are gone. All that's left is money, jewelry, and antiquities. In fact, I want to show you real quick my favorite moment from the looting of Assad's palace. A gentleman in the palatial room frustrated that this chair is not reclining. Depths to Assad's depravity? <laughs> Where are the cup holders? And obviously, this is surprising because in that part of the world, you'd think there'd be an abundance of at least Ottomans. The... <laughs> empire of them. <laughs> what was startling to me is how quickly the whole thing unfolded. I mean, how long did it take to overthrow the Assad regime? The regime overthrown by rebel fighters in just 11 days. 11. <laughs> how did they manage to end a decade-long civil war and defeat the entire Syrian military in just 11 days? And Wait, zoom in on there. Is that zoom? Are you kidding me? No! There's no way! That guy? What? How did... Is, is that where he rode that city bike? Is that... <laughs> Actually, I obviously couldn't have been that guy. Uh, uh, today, they did appear to catch that guy today at a McDonald's in Altoona, Pennsylvania. Uh, it's true. Uh, look, I'm sorry, guys. Apparently, a bystander at the McDonald's ratted him out. And normally, I, I would say, snitches get stitches. Uh, but obviously, without pre-approval, there's really... <laughs> though, I want to meet the rebel mastermind who overthrew this entrenched regime. The leader of the Islamist rebel group Abu Muhammad al-Jawani arriving triumphantly in Damascus, addressing a crowd at a mosque. My God, all hail Syrian John Torturo. <laughs> Tell me more about this modern-day George Washington. Syrian rebel leader Abu Mohammed al Jolani, who's been on the U.S. terror watch list since 2013. Significant portions of al Jolani's group maintain strong links to ISIS. A former al Qaeda member. He's got a $10 million bounty on his head. Ooh, $10 million. I eh? hope he never ends up in a McDonald's in Altoona. <laughs> okay, so we've got a. Former Al Qaeda guy in charge now. What does he have planned for the new Syria? I'm assuming it's some Taliban esque, brutal, fundamentalist dystopia. There must be a legal framework that protects and ensures the rights of all, not a system that serves only one sect. I ask God Almighty that this be a conquest free of revenge, but a conquest entirely of mercy and love. Conquest of mercy and love? I I think that's how Taylor ended the Eras tour. <laughs> Wait, the, the... The new leader of Syria is a Swifty? How many, how many terror groups is that guy in? Seriously, though, how did an Al-Qaeda associate suddenly turn into Deepak Chopra? You've gone through quite the transformation once an Al-Qaeda leader, and now you are projecting this image of a moderate 
leader and a moderate group. I believe that everyone in life goes through phases and experiences, and these experiences naturally increase a person's awareness. A person in their 20s will have a different personality than someone in their 30s or 40s. I get it. Who amongst us hasn't gone through an emo phase or <laughs> goth phase or a 9-11 phase, you know? <laughs> you know how kids are. I don't like jihad anymore, Dad. I'm into horses. <laughs> Jelani's purported transformation to a more benevolent governance gives me hope as our country goes through its hopefully peaceful transfer of power to hopefully a more humbled and mature leader as well. In his first uh, network TV interview since the election, President-elect Donald Trump says he would like to see members of the January 6th committee sent to jail. Honestly, they should go to jail. Or not. <laughs> that is, of course, the incoming United States president and I'm assuming future statue haver, Donald Trump, <laughs> who this weekend was in Europe, continuing the long American tradition of not waiting for the inauguration to become president and head overseas and meet with allies and remind everybody how f***ing weird he is about shaking hands. <laughs> Top down, up down, bottom, side to side, grab it, hit me on the flippity, and how seamlessly Trump resumed his official duties of looking bored as shit in meetings. <laughs> This is so dumb. <laughs> now, normally the first lady, Melania, would have been there to say to Donald, sit up! <laughs> but another stroke of weirdness, Trump was apparently traveling with his predecessor's wife, attending the opening of the Notre Dame Cathedral with Jill Biden. It was a rare moment of conciliation, one that would have given this country hope had it not immediately been undermined by the Returning president releasing an actual cologne ad belittling and sexualizing said moment. The caption there saying, a fragrance your enemies can't resist. The men's cologne and women's perfume are both selling for $199. You <laughs> won! You won! You don't have to push merch anymore! <laughs> I find it hard to believe I'm saying this, but... It's beneath you. <laughs> I mean, for God's sakes, you don't see Jolani out there pushing product. I conquered Syria, and now you can conquer dry hair follicles with my new line of beard oil.